What is going on, my reason fam? March here. This is Fragbox TV. We are at a coral supplier in Indonesia, and they have on display a display tank, which is a little bit unusual after visiting a couple farms. And it's really nice to see not only are they selling corals and have a massive like warehouse facility here full of corals, which we're handpicking over in Indonesia, thousands, thousands of corals, but they actually have a, a display. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> and um, it's different. It's nice to see, and they're all super, super healthy. They are running my favorite brand of lights. AI, hello, what's up? Hydra 52s. I'm using the 32s back in the shop with some blue accent lighting. It looks like it's probably, what's this, 90 gallon, 100 gallon? It's, it's a very nice tank, yeah. They've done a great job. I like the black sand. You don't see that too often, but it gives a very nice contrast um, against the corals and everything's super healthy in here. They have some green, hairy mushrooms. One thing to note, these are all here from Indo. So I'm in Indonesia at an Indonesian coral farm looking at corals that came out of the same ocean. So I think that's pretty cool. You're never going to see a tank in Canada with Canadian corals. It's just not going to happen. We don't have any. Um, so that, it's kind of a cool experience. Open brains look super nice. This one is wow. Rainbow colored, some acanthophilias. In the center, some nice candy apple, looks like reds. These are what we call super saiyans. They go under a, different couple, a couple different names, but back in the shop, I'm in love with the Ghani Pora in the back there, some acans. And this is kind of different. They have like a pedestal that they've set up in the middle. The rock work is quite interesting. Tia, if you're watching, comment below. Comment of the day. How do we feel about this rock work? Very minimalist. March always does two islands. It looks like we have one, two, and then the pedestal piece with a beautiful Indo golden torch on the, on the top. I kind of like that there's no background. It's see-through and you can see the white concrete wall, but it works. It's minimalist. It's, um, it's not overbearing with the rock. It's got an unusual white overflow in the corner kind of hidden, but it all works together. It's not a normal looking tank. It's definitely not by North American standards. We always, almost always have a black background if you buy a Red Sea, a water box, or maybe even a reef casa. Mm -hmm. Shameless plug always going to see a black background or you, you put something so i kind of like it's it's different even with the wire it's just very uh it feels very homey and kind of old school in in a way over here we have some zoanthids this is what we call uh hawaiian galaxies green bay packers blue mushrooms they don't call any of these things so any of the names keep in mind anything that we call you know this uh mummy eye or water melon or butt picker or whatever you call it they don't have names for that stuff over here. Everything is done by Latin name, which I really, really like. If you've seen any of the other videos, maybe you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. Make sure to subscribe. I'm starting to revert back to Latin names because I think it's more useful to know what the Latin name is when we're dealing with corals. Up here on top, we have some nice hairy mushrooms and some more branching hammer, flower pot, flower pot, everything's super healthy. Some lobophilia, that's a pretty cool piece hiding right in the back there. A little bit of Aptasia, which is quite common. So if you're ever dealing with that, there are definitely ways to get rid of it. But once you get it in the tank, you know what? Not even if you get it, you're going to get it eventually. And I find Aptasia is just something you manage. You, um, you never truly, truly eradicate it. You, it just kind of comes and goes. You add some peppermints, it goes away. You add some bergie, it goes away. Or copper band butterfly, Aptasia X, there's different ways. You kind of just, it's just sort of the pot, a part of the hobby. And I think you'll understand that um, with time if you're doing it long enough. This I'm surprised to see. This is a Fruit Loop Soantha. This I'm not sure is from Indonesia. Those are from here? The, from here. Oh, so the first time I ever seen these or got them was from a supplier in Taiwan. But I guess we're not that far from there and they can find them in the same ocean. Some of the nicest zoas I've ever seen though, out of Japan and out of Taiwan, some really cool ones. The torches are uh, all looking great. Lower flow in this tank. And up there, I think I see some Kung Pao or Beach Bum. I get confused with the two. The star of the show is this Acanthophilia. Just love and life, stretched across, perfect color, green and orange. Just looks spectacular. Everything in here very healthy. Clove polyps, actually, you know what? They said we're allowed one piece out of this tank. This tank actually belongs to the owner's uh, wife. They're over there arguing about coral prices or something. And it's her tank. She is also in the industry. It's sort of a family business. And this is her personal display tank. She goes and picks corals to put in here. She said we can have one. I really, really like those clothes. But I'm not going to touch them or take anything from them because we are in their house right now. And this is somebody's display. So we'll let them all be. Um, some cool bubble coral. Ple Sinularia plego... Yeah, plego... That's a hard one. 
Where's the guy who knows the Latin names? Plego. I, pleno, pleno something. It's a, it's a tricky Latin name, but you really don't confuse it with anything else because bubble coral is bubble coral is bubble coral. That You never ever confuse bubble coral with anything, except maybe an anemone. At the right angle, you might think it's a bubble tip. But other than that, um, very simple in, uh, for the sump. We have just some biomedia, oh, thank you, and a skimmer. That's it. Water comes down, oversized, funky skimmer. Actually, I don't know what kind of skimmer that is. Some biomedia here, some blocks and some other stuff. Um, and then a return pump. There's not a lot going on. There's no doser. There's no apex. They probably change the socks every once in a while. Very, very simple. Oh, it goes outside. Oh, chiller, chiller outside. So that's very common here. Something we don't see in North America too often. It is hot. It is very hot and humid in here. So you need a chiller in order to maintain that, that temperature. And then one little pump. That's all they got going on is the return pump, which is a little bit unusual. It's actually coming from the bottom. So traditionally we'd see it come up and over the side and into the tank, or you might drill here or here. But um, that's a little funky actually coming through the bottom. I guess the idea is to hide it behind the rock work. You can't really see it. Actually, you don't see it at all. It gives you an unobstructed view of the tank. Anyways, really, it's, it's nice and it's different and I wanted to share that with you guys and I hope you enjoy it. We're going to wrap up this video of Fragbox TV. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and you'll get notified when we do videos like this. And that's about it. I'll leave you today with this little Zoanthid garden and I'll say the same thing I always say. Have a very nice day, afternoon, or maybe morning, wherever you're watching from. Never stop reefing and goodbye for now.